Writer Ministries, a ministry where health, wealth, and wisdom prevails. Writer Ministries is an international ministry bringing healing, evangelism, and salvation to the nations of the world. Come be a part of this growing outreach where you too can learn to preach, teach, and heal in Jesus' name. Writer Ministries is a ministry that declares the kingdom of God is the power of God getting results. Now, here's Pastor Robert. Praise the Lord. I'm Pastor Robert with Writer Ministries. How many are glad you're going to get some more insights on fear not in Jesus' name? Amen? Amen. As, you, as you take the scriptures and apply them, you'll see how exciting this can be. When you realize that you don't have to fear, it's just the voice of the devil lying to you. How many know that he lies to you, but you don't even recognize he's lying to you because you think it's you? Just to bring up a little thought on the devil... He always talks to you in the first person. So if you haven't figured out what that is, it's like this. I'm stupid. I'm fat. I'm ugly. And you hear those thoughts. And you think it's you because you hear the first person. That's the lie. He's lying to you. And you're allowing it because you think it was you instead of saying, No, I'm wonderfully made. No, I'm rich. No, this is how God created me, and I'm enjoying it just like he did. Thank you, Jesus. So, devil, I command you bound. I break your power, and I command you to shut your mouth and go. And if you don't do anything about it, then you'll get deceived and beat up. So don't have to do that anymore, so I fear not. I say, fear not. fear not. I don't fear. You'll be surprised how people get all afraid because they have some preconceived ideas. And I'm going to give you an example of a preconceived, this is not even in my notes, this is coming out of my heart. You have already made up your mind. You've already made up your mind. I'm going to get scared. You've already made up your mind. I'm afraid I might fall. You've already made up your mind. And if you've made up your mind, there's nothing more to do. You're done. You've figured, there's nothing to talk about. You've already made up your mind. Come on, there are people in this church, they make up their mind, you can't do anything to talk them out of it. You ready to go to that move? Nope, I'm, I'm not going, I'm not going to be there. You can't do anything to talk them out of it. They already made up their mind. And the devil gets you confused thinking you're doing right. You need to stop that and start realizing, Holy Spirit, what's the truth in what I just heard? Amen. And you need to know the difference between oh me and amen on the inside in Jesus' name. Because the devil's going to do whatever he can to get you mixed up and throw you off track. So don't allow that to happen anymore. Say, okay. The objectively here is you keep Jesus first place. Say first place. Preeminence. He's first place. Okay? If he's first place, then you're not going to have a problem. But if he's second place, third place... Oh, I finally got around to praying. That wasn't first place. First place is right now. What's going on? Let's hear from the Lord and get your answers. Say, thank you, Lord. Praise God. All right, in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 13, it says, Who has delivered us? Say, I've been delivered from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. And are you delivered or not? Does this say hath, which is already past tense? It's already done. So why are you acting as though you're not? That's what the Bible says. Amen? So here's the thing about this scripture. How many know, K-N-O-W, how many know what Jesus did for you? See, well, people always say, well, you know, I don't believe like that. Well, what do you believe and what do you know? Because he's already delivered us from the power of the devil, the darkness. It's already taken. And we're now in the kingdom of God, which is set free from the enemy. Amen. So do you know that? Do you know that Jesus did that for you? If you know it, what are you all afraid for? What are you all upset for? What's Because you don't really know. You may know what the scripture says, but you haven't experienced it. An experiential effect, man... The Holy Spirit healed me. I don't have to tell nobody that God is alive. Yeah, I know he's alive. 
but you don't because you haven't had that experience. And the only way you can do it is say, I believe this. I receive this. This is mine. He did it for me. I'm delivered. Now, this is one of my sayings I've said along for a lot of years. I know I'm set free. I know who set me free. I know it. Right? Okay? So, what do you know? So, when you put it into practice and you say what you know that Jesus did for you, then you have it. So the devil isn't going to talk you out of it. You've made up your mind. I am delivered in Jesus' name. Now, in Romans chapter 6, verse 1 through 18, we're going to read them. What shall we say then? Shall we, what? Continue in sin that grace may abound? What's the answer? There's people who do this constantly. And, and you know, Paul, he says, what shall we continue in sin that grace may Because Well, you know, God will forgive me. That's not what it's telling you to do. You can stop sinning. Say, thank you, Lord. Okay? God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Now, are you dead to fear? Mm -hmm. You say it, but does, is it really? Oh, I was afraid and I hid your money. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I didn't want to give anything because I won't have anything to eat. You're letting fear talk to you. I can't do this. I can't do that. Why can't you? It's not you that's keeping you around, is it? Is it the Lord or you? I mean, you can see how the enemy gets right in there and to mess with you, okay? So, what you got to do is you got to do what it says. That will keep you free, amen? Now, know ye not, don't you know, that so many of us, as we're baptized into Jesus Christ, everybody say, born again. Born again. Baptized into his death. So, when he died, I died. Everybody say it. What did he die of? Right. The sin life killed him, right? Really? So, when you look at it, when he died, I died. So, what died to me? Sin. Hello? So, are we set free from it? So, what, why would fear hold you down if you're set free and dead to it? It has no power over you in Jesus' name. Okay? Then it goes on, therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. I'm dead. I'm dead. What are you dead to? Sin. Fear, sin, everything. Okay? That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should also walk how? In the newness of life. So, like, a comparison translation, like. So, just like he got raised from the dead... I'm raised from the dead, so I no longer have to walk in the sin nature. I can walk in newness of life. But a lot of people say, well, you know, once a thief, always a thief. Really? No. Didn't you get rehabilitated when you went to prison? No, because they didn't teach you about Jesus. <laughs> you didn't get your mind renewed. You don't understand. But here, we have something to know. Oh, so I don't have to do the sin stuff anymore because I'm dead to it. I'm free from it. I'm alive with Christ. He doesn't sin. So neither do I. You see how this is starting to happen? Amen. For if we have been planted together, have we? When you say, Jesus, come in my life, yeah. In the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. So as he is alive, so am I, without sin. Say good news. Knowing this, I know something. What do you know? I know I've been translated. I know I've been, I'm dead to all this. That our old man is crucified, dead with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Isn't that good news? Amen. Amen. So for he that is dead, freed from sin. Do you know you're dead? Are you dead in Christ? Well, I guess I'm not dead enough. I had people talk to me like that. I said, no, you either are or you don't. You're not doing it. That's all it amounts to. So you hear thoughts on the inside of you, and what are you saying? You're saying what you heard on the inside. Did you hear the voice of God talking to you, or did you hear the voice of the devil talking to you? And all you're doing is saying what you heard, and you thought it was you. Come on now. We've got to realize, no, I'm free from that, that, that sin. Amen? No longer have to do it anymore. I can quit smoking. I can quit this. I can quit that. 
because I'm what? Dead to it. Yeah. And there's a mortuary right across the street. Do you think those people are still carousing around and yelling, screaming, and cussing, and swearing? No. They're what? Dead. Well, how's a dead person act? They don't do those things anymore because they're what? Dead. They're done. All right? So when the thoughts and the sin and all that junk comes against you or fear, now I'm dead to that. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Say amen. amen. That's the good news. Knowing this, that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death has no more dominion over him. So we can say death has no more dominion over me or sin has no more dominion over me. It doesn't dominate me. Amen. So, for in that he died, he died unto how many times? Why do we keep saying I got to come back to the Lord and get on my hands and knees and ask Him to forgive me because I did it again, 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 I did it again. I have to recommit my life to the Lord. Oh God, I got to do this. How many people do you know do that? It's because they don't know. K N O W was a verse for scripture in Colossians chapter one that I've been delivered from darkness. Translated in the kingdom of his dear son. I don't know that I'm dead. How come you don't know? It's right here in the Bible. Didn't you read it? Yes, but I didn't understand. So if you don't understand, immediately the devil comes and steals the word from you. I might know this is, this is good. So how many times do you supposed to die? Once. So if you know you're dead to sin, why do you keep sinning? If you know you're dead to fear, why do you keep fearing? Because... You're not allowing it to work in your life. If that's the truth, and it is, then do the truth. Amen? Okay? Now, likewise, likewise what? Reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So what do you get to do in this scripture? Just like we read in the other scriptures, like you get to do something. You get to make an account. You get to make the decision. I'm dead, and I've made up my mind. And that settles that. No ifs, and buts, or buts. There's no back doors. This is it. I'm dead to sin, and it's not going to affect me. How many know? But sin comes in on the back door and tries to lure you and get you off key. And you've got to have more of the Lord in you to stop that. Say, thank you, Jesus. So here we go. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Notice the word, let. And God said, let there be light. God said, let there be. What are you letting? <laughs> I didn't stop the devil. I let it happen. I let that thought entertain me. I let it happen. I know I was only supposed to have a bite, but I ate the whole thing. I let it happen. I thought I was dead to that. No, you weren't. You allowed it to happen. You have to say, no, in all these things, I'm more than a conqueror. No, I'm not doing that. I'm dead to that. No. And as Alan would say, let's not go there. <laughs> Amen. So neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and as your members, as instruments of righteousness, righteousness unto God. So you still have an ability to yet sin or not to sin. Come on. To be or not to be. To sin or not to sin. Your decision. And God allows you to make your own choice. But if you say, no, when Jesus died to sin, I died to sin. He's my Lord and I will do what he did. And that, you know what happens? The thoughts and the sin like, this stops. Just that fast. That's how quick the Lord puts it into it. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. So, does not dominate me. Sin does not dominate me. You know you don't have to sin anymore. You can quit. You say that to people and they'll look at you like, what? I have to have help. I have to have a patch to quit smoking. No, you don't. You just need Jesus. And make the decision, I don't do it anymore. That settles it. And that's what happens. 
What then? Shall we sin because we're not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know you not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. He's just coming right out and telling you, you don't have to do it, but this is what people do. Moving on. But God be thanked that you were the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you. And we heard that in Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. That doctrine says, when Christ died, he delivered me from the power of sin, de the devil, right? Or the darkness. He set me free. When you agree with that and say yes, when the temptations come, you go, no, I'm dead to that. Okay? Moving on. Being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. Say, thank you, Lord. For both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all of one, for which cause he is not ashamed to call us brethren. Amen? Praise the Lord. So Jesus didn't shrink back because of fear. Jesus calls us brethren and Jesus delivers us from the fear of death. So he didn't shrink back. When it was time to go to the cross, didn't he not say, I could call on my Father for four legions of angels? But to fulfill the scriptures, what did he do? He yielded himself to that because he knew the, the outcome. He knew the outcome. He knew the answer before it happened. And if you know the answer before it happens, it's easy to do because you know the outcome. And so if you know the outcome of not sinning and not being fearful, the answer is so much nicer. Amen. See, let me just say this like this. For those who are not here and who are watching us later, especially the young people, that they want to have sex before they get married. Right? We all know that you're not supposed to, but they do, Right? But what's the answer to not doing it? Why are you abstaining? Why, what's the advantage? What's the, what's the goodness out of not doing that prior to having marriage? If you knew the answer that Jesus is going to bless you so much more abundant, you're going to have a wife, you're going to have a husband who obeys God. You're going to have a family that's just going to be walking with Jesus. You're going to have all good things happen to you in your life. You would want to do that. But if, since you don't know the answer, you just do what you think your body wants. And then you do it, and then you realize, oh, I should have done that. And now it's done. It's over with. You're over with. But praise be to God who loves us enough. But you know, you can reestablish that and say, Lord, I'm not doing that anymore. Amen? A big, big change. So, in Hebrews chapter 2, in verse 11, this is what we're reading. If you realize what the word sanctified, set apart, have you set yourself apart for the work of the Lord? And just between you and the Lord, you say, ah, that's what I want to do, Lord. He'll help you to maintain that in Jesus' name. Amen? He says, uh, saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. So how many of you guys talk about Jesus outside this church? In the midst of the church, I will sing praise unto thee. So when you've got to realize, there's a value to sharing the goodness. Because you help somebody. Amen. Okay? And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children which God has given me. Amen. So Jesus didn't shrink back because of fear. He calls us brethren. And he delivers us from the fear of death. Good news. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, Jesus himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is to say the devil. He destroyed that. That's the best part. Okay? And deliver them through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Okay. Verse 14 and 15 means a lot. He suffered through the same as we do, okay? But he delivered us from the fear of death. 
through his death on the cross. We got to start saying, wow, wow, that's amazing, Lord. You've set me free, and I didn't even know it. Now that I know that through death, through your, your crucifixion and resurrection, you set me fear free from the fear of death. I'm free. I don't have to worry about it anymore. I'm free from it. All my life, I was subject to this bondage. I was bound. I didn't think there was a way out. But you made a way out. You made it so I could be set free because I'm fearing all the time. Don't have to. I'm dead to it. I'm alive unto Christ. He's not full of fear. He knows the answer. And he'll tell you the right thing. Isn't that good news? Amen. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 through 5, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Good news. For the weapons, uh, see, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Isn't that good news? I, I just want to go back. It's awesome. Fear tries to put a stronghold against you. Fear tries to put a stronghold. I, oh no, here it comes again. Oh no, oh no. That's a stronghold coming against you and you're not doing anything about it except go, oh no, oh no. Uh, that's the way the world operates. We don't do that anymore. You don't have to listen to that. You just cast it down. Casting down this fearful imagination telling you that you can't do it. All right, guys. I want to share something with you because you need to hear this. This is the Holy Spirit speaking to you from me, to you right now. Well, what about such and such on the job that you're doing? Well, I don't know how to do that. You're fearful of doing that. So you make the excuse, well, I can't do it, I don't know how. You never said to the person in charge, I don't know how to do that, but I can learn. I can, I can accomplish to do this. I can fix this. I can learn how to do this. So most people don't want to do anything. They want someone to do it for them. And then fear grabs you, and then you go, oh, I don't know how to do that. This, let me give you an example here. I'll use me. There was times in my life I had a hard time adding and subtracting and dividing and multiplying. Like, you know, none of you guys ever had that problem in case you run across it. But you know why? I made the excuse. I, I just couldn't get it. Excuse me? Why didn't you take the time, Robert, to learn it? Oh. Well, I didn't want to. That was it. I just didn't want to. So your attitude screwed you over, Robert. Oh. Oh, okay. So then along comes a Commodore 64 computer, and I got this in my high. I, I, I got to learn how to make this thing work. And I started learning numbers. Division. How do you make a computer divide? You want to use the dividing line. Oh, how do you make it multiply? You don't put the X in there. You don't two times that. You know? There's a way to do it in computer language. And I learned how to. I learned. I did what? I learned. Just because you don't know something at the moment doesn't mean you can't learn it. Somebody says, well, I'm just stupid. Did you go to school? Yeah. They just passed me through. I didn't have... No, you didn't take the time to learn. So, now take on the responsibility to learn, and you can do it. Everybody look at me and say, that's the truth, but are you going to do it? Okay, so you want to learn things in the scriptures? Go to church, read your Bible, listen to stuff, cap, you know, capture it. And next thing you know, the Holy Spirit's going to help you accomplish he wants you to learn to add and subtract, right? Got a big amen out of that. Okay, so when you run across something you don't know what to do at the moment, what do you do? Learn. Now, I have these thoughts in my mind I can, how I can make money, but I don't know how to do it. So I'm just going to throw that away and do nothing? Or am I going to learn how to do it so when the time comes I can do it and make money? Say. That's not hard, but the fear tells you you can't. That's a stronghold holding you back. 
instead of say, shut up, I'm dead to that. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, and I can do this because I have the mind of Christ and I can learn how. And he had to learn how to be a carpenter, right? And he just didn't turn out to be one. How many understand you've got to take some time to learn? All right. So, fear tries to put the stronghold on you. Instead of letting it put a stronghold on you, cast it down. That's what the Bible says. Casting down imaginations, all right? Okay, moving on. In 2 Corinthians 4.13, we having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. This is a powerful scripture. What is it that you believe? I believe that Jesus set me free from fear. So I'm saying it, therefore I speak. I'm saying, according to Colossians, I am been delivered from the darkness. I've been translated into the kingdom of God. I have all that he says I get to have. I believe that. I speak that. That's what it's saying. And if you will do what it says, you're going to get the answers. So fear tries to paint a big old picture, but we speak to it to make it bow, and we, look, and we walk by faith. We tell that spirit of fear, get out of here, shut your mouth. I mean, if you, were, if you could just see in the spirit realm, that little spirit that's lying to you is the size of an ant, one of those little sugar ants, one of the little tiny ones. And you see how big you are? And you could put your foot down and that would be the end of that ant. But when it comes to the devil talking to you, Ah! I'm scared, I can't do that! Shut up! Get out of here in Jesus' name. There's power in the name of Jesus. You have the authority. Amen? So walk by faith. Amen? Of course, 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. And sometimes you see stuff and it scares you. It startles you. It frightens you. So what are you going to do with it? You see it. You hear it. And you say, in Jesus' name. That person over there laying on the street will be healed by the power of God before the ambulance gets there. That's what you say. That's what you do. You don't let it shake you up. You're not controlled by the devil. You are controlled by the Lord. Say, so thank you, Jesus. Okay? So, then in Zechariah 4, 6 through 7, then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Isn't that good news? So no mountain of fear is going to stand in your way. Praise the Lord. Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain. That person shall be healed before the ambulance gets there. You all follow what I'm saying? Right? Okay. And he will bring forth the headstone there with shouting, Grace! Grace unto it. In other words, you're speaking out what you want it to happen. I want the blessing of the Lord. I, I'm, I put money in the offer. I'm going to be rich because God said if I give, he'll bless me. I thank you, Father God. No fear is telling me I can't buy lunch for everybody. No fear says oh, you can't let this stuff talk to you. You talk to it. It doesn't appear to be with my eyes. I don't go by what I see with my eyes. There are more of them around us than there are of them. You've got to start saying what God says in Jesus' name. So no mountain of fear is going to stand in your way. Amen. And Jesus answering said to them, Have faith in God. Amen. Amen. Isn't that good news? For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain of fear, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. I mean, this is powerful words. Thank you, Lord. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Amen? Amen. So our hearts don't have to melt because we have the Holy Spirit and the love of God in us. Amen? Okay? What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, come on, who can be against us? Say, nobody. I know that God is for me. When I know this, it sets me free from fear. Good news, Robert. Yes. 
He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all thanks? Right? Amen. Amen. So who shall say, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Amen. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Good news, he's praying. Who shall separate us from the love of God? Will fear do that? You're supposed to say no. Shall tribulation, will distress, or persecution, or famine, nakedness, peril, sword, or fear? No. No. Okay? This is good news. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all day long, but we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. This is what it feels like, but that isn't what happens. No! no. <laughs> you Christians got to learn to say no! no to the devil. No! Come on. That's what name means. In all these things, all those things he talked about, peril, nakedness, and all these things, we are more than what? Conquerors through him that loved us. No devil, I conquer you in the name of Jesus. Praise God. So I know that God is for me, and that sets me free from fear. And this good news? For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, principalities, powers, things present, things to come, even fear, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creatures shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Can this good? Herein is our love made what? Perfect. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. God is love, and I know it. Do you know it? Are you full of love? Do you talk love or do you talk fear? When you talk love, fear doesn't have a chance. You squish him. Okay? Okay. There is no fear in love. Woohoo! But perfect love casts out fear. I have perfect love. His name is God. And he casts out fear. So it's gone. Because fear hath torment, he that feareth is not made perfect in love. So if you're fearing, you don't know that how much God loves you. And you haven't made the decision. I have made up my mind. <laughs> I am free from fear. that good news? God's love is in me, and I know it. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting out of my hands. Isn't that good news? For the God has not given us what? The spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. How many know that? Amen. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this awesome outpouring of the Holy Spirit giving us revelation knowledge on not to fear. And with these amazing scriptures, we are excited. We have been translated Yoo-hoo! into the kingdom of your dear son. Far from fear. And all the people of God said, yes and amen, amen. and amen. amen. Thank you for watching and participating with Pastor Robert in this tremendous teaching. As you practice putting into place these biblical truths, you will develop your human spirit as a mighty believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hi everybody, I'm Pastor Robert with Rider Ministries. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm sure it has helped you. And I just also want to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So pray with me out loud and accept the Lord as your Savior. Say with me, Heavenly Father, that's right, say Heavenly Father, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Jesus, I invite you into my heart. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving me of my sins. Holy Spirit, come and dwell within me and make me the kind of person you want me to be. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me today. Now, if you prayed that simple prayer, God heard you, he's written your name in the Lamb's Book of Life, and you will get to be with him in heaven. I'm so glad you prayed that prayer. So give us a call at 503-652-2650. Let us know you pray that prayer of salvation. We love you. God loves you. We'll talk to you soon. God bless.
We invite you to join us again in learning God's Word with these awesome video teachings. You can visit us on the web for more of God's revelation and biblical truths at writer.org. That's writer.org. And join us again next time for more of Writer Ministries with Pastor Robert Writer.